In this video, we'll introduce the idea of continental drift and take a look at the evidence for it. First of all, what is continental drift? The continents are moving along the seafloor at about 5 centimeters a year. That's not very far over human lifespan, but it adds up over millions of years. This animation shows the movement of the continents over the past 250 million years. It starts when the dinosaurs roamed the earth. At that time, the continents were all held together in a landmass called Pangaea. Over the next 250 million years, the landmass broke apart and the pieces traveled to their current positions. Check out the speed that India travels toward Asia about 60 million years ago. The resulting collision resulted in the Himalayas. So what is the evidence for continental drift? Well, around the early 1900s, a German meteorologist named Wegener came up with the idea of continental drift just because he came across some information that made him really wonder about some factors surrounding the continents. Some of the things that he noticed was that there were matching geological structures in some of the continents that were no longer nearby. Here we see uh, an image of Pangaea and it shows you all the different major continents. So one of the things that Wegener noticed was that the present day continental shelves line up with one another. So if this is the boundary of North America, there's actually a shelf that goes out beyond it. It's just a shallower part of the sea that's connected to it. And likewise, you'd find something similar surrounding Africa. These continental shelves actually line up with one another. And you can see that in the rest of them, this being the outline of South America and this being the outline of Africa, those two land masses don't actually touch each other, but the continental shelves line up nearly perfectly. Another thing that Wegener noticed was uh, matching geological structures. So he noticed that rocks found in Newfoundland over here actually are the same types of rocks as those found in Greenland up around this area. Okay, so all of these sort of match as well as Norway which would be sort of over here. And also Scotland, okay, which all would be kind of in the same area. And during Pangaea, these continents were all lined up with one another, forming one large landmass, but after they spread apart, they took their geological features with them. Another factor that Wegener noticed was that there were matching fossils. So in this image again we see the continents lined up with one another and he noticed in particular three different kinds of fossils. He noticed a uh, Megasaurus, Lystrosaurus and Glossopterus. Glossopterus is a type of fern and what he noticed about it is that even though it's a warm climate fern there are fossils for it in some pretty cold places like Antarctica and the explanation he came up with was that when this was one large landmass, uh, Glossopterus was very common fern throughout the whole area and in fact that whole landmass was sitting in a place quite different than it is right now. It wasn't uh, near the North Pole, North or South Pole for that matter, but it was in more tropical areas and so this fern that loves warm weather was actually quite um, at home in all of these uh, locations. Um, similarly, uh, you can take a look at the Mesosaurus and the uh, Lystrosaurus and same idea with them even though fossils of them are currently found in different locations on different continents uh, the explanation for that is the fact that all the continents were joined at the time that those uh, reptiles were around. So Wegener also noticed a few interesting things about ancient glaciers. Um, he found that there was evidence that uh, ancient gl glaciers uh, were present on different continents at the same time and the only conclusion he could reach was that uh, there was only one major continent. Uh, 
Another example of this is that there are coal deposits present in Antarctica and we know that coal forms from the decomposition of once living things usually in tropical swamp area. Antarctica is nowhere near the tropics right now and yet it has these fossils uh, or these coal deposits from this organic matter that it could only live in warm areas. The explanation for that is that Antarctica was not always at the South Pole and that it was probably in a warmer location when it was once part of this uh, mega continent called Pangaea. You can watch a video on how Wegener made these conclusions at this website. So what causes the continents to move? Well, back in Wegener's time, there just wasn't enough information to explain why the continents move. And so his idea was largely dismissed by his peers and his colleagues. Uh, it took about 40 more years before uh, people gathered enough evidence to explain why the continents move. The first piece of information that we're going to talk about is tectonic plates. Um, Earth is made up of large movable slabs of rock called tectonic plates and basically what they are are pieces of the crust that have cooled and are floating now on sort of a sea of magma much the way pieces of styrofoam might move around in a bathtub and if you move the water around those pieces of styrofoam are going to bump into each other and bash into each other which actually explains things like earthquakes and volcanoes and we'll talk more about that in the next video. Another piece of information that was gathered over the 40 years after Wegener is that volcanoes lie along the tectonic plates. So if you take a look at this image, all those red dots represent active volcanic areas or volcanic areas. And you can see that they lie along the plates. And we live in an area of a lot of sort of tectonic activity uh, because we live along the Ring of Fire and the Ring of Fire happens to be a border that is a location where different plates are actually colliding with one another or sliding past each other and so as we'll see again in the next video this actually results in a lot of volcanic activity as well as earthquakes. Related to this idea of the plates was another discovery and that was the discovery of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Deep under the Atlantic Ocean, uh, scientists discovered uh, by using some um, imaging techniques using sonar that there was this ridge or sort of mountain range right between uh, the North and South America and then Africa and Europe. And in fact, for the most part it runs underwater and is this mountain range. Previously scientists just thought that the ocean floor was flat and it was quite a surprise to see that there were mountains there. Uh, kind of mysterious as to why they were there without the explanation of uh, the tectonic plates moving. In fact if you follow the Mid-Atlantic Ridge right up through here you see that it goes right through Iceland and this is one point where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is actually above sea level. You can see a lot of red dots there indicating that there is a lot of uh, volcanic activity in that area. And if you take a little close-up view of that, you'll see that uh, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge actually runs right through the island of Iceland. In fact, it was responsible for the formation of Iceland and they have tremendous numbers of volcanoes there and uh, an incredible capacity for geothermal energy. Uh, here's a little image of uh, that location. Basically what it's showing us is uh, a big tourist attraction uh, where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is, is actually above sea level and this big slab of rock here is actually on the North American plate and on the other side of the path over here what you'd be seeing is part of the Eurasian plate so it's quite a tourist attraction. Another piece of evidence that was discovered over the 40 years after Wegener was magnetic striping. And again, this is associated with the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So here's the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. What they've noticed here is that the rock, uh, as you move further and further away from the ridge in each direction, its magnetic striping alternates. The Earth's magnetic field regularly reverses itself and north becomes south and south becomes north. Rocks of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge uh, show this. The rocks of the ocean floor show alternating polarity. So you can actually see an explanation for why this happens in greater detail by visiting this website.
And here we have uh, an example of the seafloor spreading. So this is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and what's actually happening here to form this underwater mountain range is that magma from underneath the crust actually is finding its way to the crust surface which happens to be underwater under the Atlantic and as it reaches the surface it cools and it forms new rock and the rock is actually forced apart by more magma coming up and so the seafloor begins to spread in opposite directions and this actually accounts for why North America or sorry why South America and why uh, Africa are being pushed apart from each other by a rate of about five centimeters a year. So all this information was sort of gathered and it all kind of came together for a fellow named Jay Tuzo Wilson who's a Canadian. In the mid-1960s he came up with an explana explanation for continental drift. He combined the concepts of seafloor spreading and magnetic striping and he suggested that chains of volcanic islands like the Hawaiian Islands were formed when the plate they were on passed over a geologic hotspot where molten rock rises to the Earth's surface. Oh, and uh, Tuzo also thought that the continents must break apart at certain areas and move over the Earth's surface and then rejoin. So what he came up with was really an explanation for the formation of mountains and ocean basins and the cause of earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. He explained why the tectonic plates move and um, he even explained how rocks go through the rock cycle from um, igneous to sedimentary to metamorphic and uh, back and forth between those rocks. So this was a very unifying theory that explained a lot of questions that were um, on people's minds uh, once this information was being gathered. So this is just a brief introduction to uh, plate tectonics and it kind of launches us into the next uh, section. So I hope that helps.